And does your child have a cell phone? Well, some doctors say it's not a good idea for younger children to be around all that radiation. That's because of an ongoing debate about whether cell phones can cause cancer. The wireless industry says cell phones are safe, but two cancer prevention specialists, they're urging caution. It's next to impossible to take the cell phone away from your child, but here's a few things you need to know that could protect them from any excess radiation. I was really excited about it. Giselle Paz got her first cell phone at 11 ever since. I couldn't go out, go out without it. Austin Bird got his first at... Eight. Now at nine, he can call people if I'm bored, play games, text. Cell phones aren't toys. Roughly two out of three kids over seven have a cell phone, and some doctors are concerned. I would delay cell phone use as long as possible. Public health researcher Joel Moskowitz and cancer specialist Robert Nagorny, two doctors raising alarms about our nonstop connectedness. Some of these cell phones are generating four different kinds of radiation. The last thing in the world you let your child do is play with something radioactive. Studies looking at whether cell phone use causes brain tumors have been confusing at best. While some brain tumor patients and their doctors feel certain their phones are to blame, many cell phone users say they're not convinced. I kind of believe it, but at the same time I don't because like, everyone uses cell phones. There's a lot of things they say was good, was not good, so I just need proof, that's all. Causation, causality is the most difficult thing in science. Dr. Nagorny says the reason it's so hard to prove a link between cell phones and cancer is that tumors can take decades to develop. Cancers require what's called a latency a period of time during which the exposure leads to the disease. It took doctors 40 years to prove cigarettes are dangerous. I mean, something that you would consider intuitively obvious, cigarettes, lung cancer, took decades because the cause and effect are very hard to establish. So Dr. Nagorny tells his patients when it comes to wireless... It is proven to be true, you'd rather be safe than sorry. To keep your phone and ditch the risks, doctors recommend some simple precautions. One is don't keep the cell phone in your pocket. As long as the phone is turned on, it's constantly transmitting microwave energy in your pocket. Well, that's closely opposed to the, to the uh, male reproductive organs and quite closely opposed to the female reproductive organs. I would say these are things you don't really want to radiate. Reduce the amount of time you spend with your phone at your head. Try an earpiece or better yet, the speakerphone. All of these radiation risks are exponential in terms of distance from source with each two centimeter distance, you're getting 32 fold drop off. Keep the phone just at a, a short distance away from you and the risk goes down demonstrably. If you can't create distance, you should try to only use the phone when you have a good signal. With a weak signal like when you're in an elevator or in a moving automobile, your cell phone is going to work a lot harder to reach the tower in those cases and will emit much more radiation. Finally, check your mobile network setting. New research indicates it could make a difference whether your phone is on a GSM or a CDMA network. CDMA system, uh, which is marketed by Verizon and Sprint, operates at about 1 13th to 1 28th the amount of radiation as the GSM system. While doctors recommend cell phone precautions for all ages, they worry most about kids. If it is a small head, which a child has, then the depth of pen penetration is demonstrably deeper. Plus, there is reason to believe that the bone marrow of the growing skull may also be more resonant with these frequencies. But Dr. Nagorny acknowledges problems accumulated from early exposure might not show up until children grow up and are in their 40s. For lots of kids and their parents, today's threats are what matter most. Safety on the street, anything can happen. And I just want him always to be accessible. We're not saying that people should stop speaking on the phone. All we're saying is if there is a risk here and you can modify your risk by doing simple things, I think that there's good reason to try to do those things. Both doctors also recommend keeping your phone turned off, as they said, when you carry it anywhere on your body until you need it.